Good morning from sunny New York City. A little bit chilly, but quite bright, cheery and airy. It's about 11.30 a.m., maybe 12, I forget. Now, people like me reviewing books for some... Actually, it's uh, 11.50. People like me reviewing books. I get a whole lot of people looking at these lectures and I have all these 130 lectures. On, I have awesome lectures on the, on the YouTube where I explain things off the top of my head because I don't need to look at books. And I make things very clear. But they don't look at them. They just like when I talk, all right? Anyway, people like me reviewing books. So here's a couple more. This time I'm reviewing books on atomic physics. Hardly a seen topic these days. People don't say atomic physics nuclear physics, and people don't even know the difference between atomic and nuclear physics anyway. You know, there's something on the web, who split the atom first? There's no splitting of the atom. Some people say it's Rutherford in England. Rutherford pa passed alpha particles through gold foil and saw uh, scattering from the nucleus. That's not splitting the atom. That's investigating what's inside the atom. You don't split the atom. Atom is a very complicated thing. You might split a nucleus. That's a different idea altogether. There is no such thing as splitting the atom. If you want to talk about splitting the atom, an ordinary chemical reaction splits the atom because you're exchanging electrons and valence level. Never mind about that. Also metals. So people like me reviewing books. I review books on uh, atomic and nuclear physics. Now people don't write these books anymore. So I have to go back in time. Both of these books are available on Amazon and on Craigslist. And uh, the first one is Atomic and Nuclear Physics by Littlefield and Thornley. I gave that a, a bad comment the last time I talked about it and I made a terrible mistake. I said there were lots of mistakes in this book. There's a couple of little mistakes in the book. They're so, so minute you wouldn't even find them. So I take all of that back because it's an awesome little book. One of the first books that I learned physics from is Atomic and Nuclear Physics by Littlefield and Thornley. Thornley, I used to call him Thornley. There's no end, it's Thornley. So I changed that. I'll come to that in a minute. The other book is a classic that is never going away. Atomic Physics by Max Born. Now I've told you many times who Max Born's granddaughter is. Max Born's granddaughter is Olivia Newton-John, star of Greece and of the uh, disco era with the Bee Gees in the 60s and 70s, I, I can't remember when. Now Max Born has a student, his name was J. Robert Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer has a student whose name was David Bohm. David Bohm had a student whose name was up there, me, Dermot O'Reilly. So that's my lineage. Uh, Born, Oppenheimer, me. Now before Born, actually, I think uh, Runge Lenz was the dissertation, sorry, was it Carl Runge uh, from the Runge Lenz vector. He may have been Born's uh, dissertation supervisor, and before that was Gauss. So we, we can all trace our lineage. Gauss, yeah, I go back to Gauss. Now, that doesn't mean I've nothing to do with Gauss, but <clears throat> never mind. Let's begin at this one. Atomic and Nuclear Physics by Littlefield and Thorley. It's an English book. Now, it has a Dutch name, Van Nostrand, but it doesn't matter. It's, a, it's, a, it's very English in style. Their lecturers at the Newcastle, at the le they were, they're not anymore. I mean, this is 1963. Senior lecturer, School of Physics, University of Newcastle upon Tyne, okay? An industrial city. It's an awesome book. It does not put in an unnecessary equation and it keeps them to a minimum. And everything is filled with calculational details. For example, just the simplest K. K is R over NA, Boltzmann's constantly puts in the number and works out that it's 1.38 per 10 to the power of minus 23 joules per degree per centigrade. Now, of course, we use Kelvin, but everything in here has numbers in it, and it has diagrams of atomic spectra. It's awesome for atomic spectra uh, and the theory of magnetism. You know, how 
you get spin in uh, the stern Gerlich experiment, and everything is covered in examples. This is an awesome book, and it's full of details that if you want to be an atomic physicist or a nuclear physicist, this book will get you started. And it, Van Nostrand, Reinhold Company, Molly Miller's Lane, Wokingham, Berkshire, England. Yeah? Full of uh, calculational and experimental detail. Cannot be beaten. It's an awesome book. This book I've mentioned before by Max Born. Both of these, by the way, I bought them many years ago in the foils of London. I think it's 119 Charing Cross Road, London, WC2. Okay, it's the bookshop street in London. I was working across the street at Words and Music, which is now uh, some electronics shop. But I used to work in uh, the bookshops in London, and across the street was the biggest bookshop in the world called Foils. And I bought these two books there many years ago. Now, Max Born's book is the book of a master. It has not been improved on since, nine, this is 1963, Littlefield and Thorny. This one is 1935. This has not been improved on as a book since 1935. Not only does it have all the basics of nuclear physics and atomic physics, there's a difference between the two. Nuclear physics involves a nucleus, atomic physics could involve chemistry, chemical reactions, because we're talking about the atom interchanges. But it has a massive appendix. More than 25% of the book is an appendix. In the appendix, they introduce quantum mechanics by way of the 1930s style, Schrodinger and Heisenberg, which cannot be improved on. It really cannot. You can work on it, but no. This, you know, it, it, you, can, you, you get three books in this one. You get books on spectroscopy, a book on nuclear reactions, you know, chain re the different stages of nuclear reactions. And then you get an introduction to quantum mechanics, which is awesome. Even covers um, quantum mechanics in three dimensions, you know, like uh, solving Laplace's equation uh, with um, spherical coordinates. It's awesome. Let's see if I can find anything interesting. And special relativity. See? The Laplacian in the radial version and in the angular version, uh, and so on and so forth. Separation of variables. It's all done in here, in one book. Amazing. Now, a more modern book, but it's, and the reason I like this one is by E.J. Burge, Atomic Nuclei and Their Particles. The reason I like it. See that? It's thin. $40. I got this for $10 in the street. <clears throat> but it's a good little book, and it has <clears throat> a lot of the details that you would need with a more up-to-date. Let's see when this was written. 1988, Oxford. Lovely little book. Uh, this is second edition, Oxford Science Publications, Atomic Nuclei and Their Particles. Now, having gone over the technicalities through either one of, or both of, or three of these books, you get motivated by reading the history of the whole topic. And uh, a classic is The Making of the Atomic Bomb by Richard Rhodes. Now, not only is this book a great book in history, it goes from the very beginnings of uh, the physics of the early part of the century, all up to Robert Oppenheimer and um, Robert Oppenheimer had a great relationship with General Groves, by the way. Now, Robert Oppenheimer, he was a communist, right? And a lot of people on the bomb here were actually communists. But at the time, they were allied with Russia and they all wanted to get the bomb made because they were worried about Germany and so on and so forth. And then, America, then there's the big debate to do with Japan, whether it was justified to drop the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's still going on. Listen, here we are American. Some people say, well, you took away hundreds of thousands of Japanese lives. We're American. We do not want to lose one American life, even for 100,000 
other lives, whether they be in Europe or in Asia. That's the way it is. America first, America Republic, not an empire, and we look after ourselves first. So we can save two American lives by dropping two bombs, we'll do it. And say, let's worry about it after that. Okay, so we don't want American boys losing their lives. We don't want our politicians and send them to Vietnam, Korea, or anywhere. And I don't know why they didn't do that. That's a long story. Anyway, Richard Rhodes wrote the definitive history on that whole thing, coming up to the Manhattan Project. And who really was the father of the atomic bomb? Let's think. Not one person, many. Uh, Kistiakowski was a chemist. He uh, really designed the implosion method to make the plutonium bomb. That was dropped in Nagasaki. But the gun bomb, which was just bringing two pieces of uranium together to make a critical mass, that was dropped in Hiroshima. They knew that was going to work, so they didn't have to test it. But the plutonium bomb, that was tested out in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and it worked, right? And uh, General Groves was a great organizer, but, you know, he was a clever guy as well. He knew the technicalities of most of this stuff, by the way. Oppenheimer was the brains behind an awful lot of that. But he was there because all the physicists were prima donnas. They had to have a real smart guy running them. Or they wouldn't listen to Groves. They had to listen to Oppenheimer. That's what, that was his role, really, there. Uh, anyway, the making of the atomic bomb by Richard Rose is full of technical detail. It's almost like uh, in the middle of it. It's almost like a textbook on uh, nuclear physics. You really could learn a lot from that and then go back to the drawing board for the equations afterwards. But the technical details in here are awesome. Not only that, it's got some great pictures. Let's see if I can find some. I was looking for the picture of Groves with Oppenheimer. I actually don't see it at the moment. Well, it's that famous picture anyway. There would have been a lot of that if we didn't drop the bombs. Anyway, the person I was going to say, oh yeah, there's Kistiakowski on a horse. He d devised the implosion method. He was a chemist. And to make the plutonium bomb, implosion was necessary. Uh, the reason is, you can't just, the general idea with a bomb is you have to have a critical mass, but for plutonium, you would have uh, fizzling out because you wouldn't be able to get the mass go critical quick enough without implosion. That's a long story. I'm not going into that. I don't want to discuss weaponry on the YouTube. Um, but that's an awesome book. And also, the literature in that is great. It's 900 pages long. I recommend everybody get it, right? Uh, I think it was first written in, I think it was first published in 1983. Let me check. Nineteen eighty-six. It includes a lot of characters in there, such as I. I. Rabi. I had the great fortune of having lunch with I. I. Rabi in the uh, the Brearley School in nineteen eighty-five. Um, I. I. Rabi was a great experimentalist, but he's also a very good theorist. But he played a huge role in the making in this whole Manhattan Project. What happened was, okay, Rhodes needed a place to start off the research on the uh, atomic bomb and he needed it away from the ocean so that it wouldn't be at risk from somebody coming in and bombing it from the sea or a raid from airplanes. Now, Oppenheimer loved uh, the countryside and he knew New Mexico pretty well. So he went out to, uh, where was it? Los Alamos. And there's a plateau out in, uh, Los Alamos is beautiful by the way and it has uh, mesas. You can go up a mile into the sky, and then it's flat. It's flat for 20 miles. And one of these was in Los Alamos, and that's where they built the whole village that uh, housed the theorists and the experimentalists. Now, there were lots of other places in uh, America working on the atomic bomb. There was a place in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where they purify the uranium. Purify? No. They took uranium-235 out of the mix of uranium-238 plus two. Two, three, five. About 25% of 
you needed to have a, about 25% uh, uranium-235 in a sample uh, to make it useful. That's a long story. I shouldn't be talking about this on the YouTube. Never mind. Some of that is common knowledge. So, let's summarize. Max Born, atomic physics. Littlefield and Thorley. Thorley, atomic and nuclear physics. Atomic nuclei and their particles. Beautiful because it's so thin. It has the same information as these guys, but this has everything in it, including quantum mechanics. And the making of the atomic bomb is a history, plus also a technical history, with great detail about nuclear reactions. I was looking for the picture of Rhodes and... and oh yeah, and it documents... Uh, Yeah, there's FDR. Is that FDR? I don't know who it is. Anyway, it's Einstein. This is the man I was trying to think of because that's the main man behind nuclear reactions and the atomic bomb. And who is he? Well, you must know if you're a physicist. Enrico Fermi is the main brains. Enrico Fermi was a hands-on person and then he could put theory into it just like that, without even trying. We don't have anybody like that nowadays. Now, after this talk, I'm going to give a talk on some of the worst books ever. And I'll, I'll deal with this one. He's my friend, but you have not a single piece of information about a cross-section or a decay rate in this book because the guys in here, the super string people, they don't know how to do it. There's no Fermi around anymore. All right, that's for this talk. Let's hold it till the next day. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.